Okay, now we're gonna do some things with this list. Here's the next exercise. I want you to look at each item on this list you've made and give each item a number. The number being a one, three, five, or 10. And this is why. I want you to look at an item and say, I think that would take about one year. Another item you say, I think that would take about three years. Another item, I think that would take five. And another item, looks like that's gonna take 10. Give each item now a number of what you think it might take to achieve that goal, a one, a three, a five, or a 10. Just somewhere close, doesn't have to be exact. That's about a one, that's about a three-year goal, that's about a five-year goal, that's about a 10-year goal. If it's less than one year, just make it a year. If it's more than 10, just make it 10. 10 plus something. Just approximate, one, three, five, 10. finish early, you can add some more to your list. Running a marathon. Now, as soon as you've given each item a number, I want you to now go through and count them. How many ones, how many threes, how many fives, how many tens? And then just make a little list of those numbers. How many ones, threes, fives, tens? This is gonna be interesting. Now, uh, I'd like to have a woman and a man uh, volunteer to give me uh, your tabulator list. How many ones, threes, fives, and tens? Right out here in the center somewhere. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, would you stand up and give me uh, your numbers? How many ones? How many threes? Twelve threes. Seventeen fives. Thank you very much. Now that's a bit unusual. How many of you had no 10-year goals? Okay, quite a few, right? Isn't that interesting? Here's what that means, you're not thinking out that far. You're thinking more short-term than long-term. So the number you had, what was it again on 10-year goals? 14. 14, see that's... If someone had zero, someone had 14, that's a lot of difference in thinking long range. So that's all that's for, is just to help you to think more long range. Now, I need a woman to give me a, a list. Yes, ma'am. How many ones? What is it? 23. Wow, that's pretty good. How many ones did you have, sir? Seven. Seven. Isn't that interesting? Okay, threes, how many threes? 16 threes, fives, seven, and tens. 10 tens. Wow, you've been busy. Okay. She's done this workshop before, so uh, she knew what was coming. See, that's pretty good. But now you, you get what I'm talking about? No 10 year goals means you're not thinking out quite that far. And it wouldn't hurt you know, within the next year to start stretching on out there 10, 15, 20 years away, uh, what you'd like to be accomplishing and what you'd like to have when that time frame finally rolls around. Okay, now make these notes. When you've accomplished some goals, you need some more to accomplish. Next, it's very important when you reach a goal that's significant or important to you to celebrate. So just jot that down. Celebrate a significant accomplishment. Or it doesn't have to be that significant. If it's important to you, you know, it doesn't have to be world changing or life changing. If it's just a goal that's really important to you, you finally reached it, celebrate. Now, hopefully on your list of goals, you had some family goals. 
And if the family together finally reaches a goal, jot this down, celebrate with the family. And if you're checking it off, let each member of the family put their check mark on this goal because the whole family worked on this one. Now, here's what this will do. It will help each member of your family to make a longer list of goals. Wow, if we can accomplish this, think of what else we could do. The same is true of you individually. When you accomplish something, check it off, celebrate. It'll help you to grab your list wherever it is and say, hey, if I can get here, I can double that original list. So celebration creates excitement to, to develop a longer list. You also need goals ongoing. When the early astronauts went to the moon, uh, some of them, when they came back from the moon, had psychological problems. Some of them drank too much, got into other difficulties. And one of the reasons is, where do you go now that you've been to the moon? So here's what they did later. They made sure that the astronauts later who came back from the moon had plenty of projects to keep them busy after they had been to the moon. And the same is true of you and me. Goals, after you've reached them, another list. After you've reached those, another list. My father lived to be 93. You can't imagine the goals he had. One of his goals when he was 92 was to get his driver's license renewed. <laughs> Guess what he got it renewed for? Four years. At age 92, he got his driver's license renewed for four years. Now, he didn't live long enough to... If he'd have thought about it more, I think he would have lived two or three more years just to make sure he filled all that out. So he only lived to be 93, but th at 92, got my driver's license renewed for four years. You can't imagine. He used to show his driver's license around everybody. Unbelievable. So, goals to replace goals that you've achieved, on and on, the rest of your life. Because the philosophy we discussed Yesterday was what? How far should you go? As far as you can. How many books should you read? As many as you can. How many friends should you make? As many as you can. How much should you earn? As much as you can. That's it. What should you try to be? All you possibly can. And that's the purpose of this exercise is just to stretch you, get you to think, get you to wonder, get you to ponder. I wonder what might be possible. If I could get everything I wanted, what would that be? Now, here's the next exercise. Okay, jot down the question. On your list of one-year goals, which are the four most important? Of your one-year goals, which are the four most important? So now I want you to go back over your one-year goals and pick out the four most important. You know, if you've only got four now, this is an easy exercise. So, but you might add some more to your one-year list if you haven't got enough. And then pick out the four most important. This is what turned me on at age 25. Goals for accomplishment and personal progress. Once the fires were lit for me, I'm telling you, they have never gone out. Since I was 25 years old, no one has ever said to me, when are you going to get going? When are you going to get off the couch? When are you going to get off the dime? I've never heard that since I was 25 and got all this taken care of. Wow. Here's what I've heard since I was 25. When are you going to slow down? You can't visit that many countries. You're going to have a heart attack and die. Amazing. By the way, you might stop and, and jot these notes down. Here's two, here's two excellent questions to jot down. And this is for mature people now, because these are kind of tough questions, especially one. Here's the first question. What's got you turned on? That's a good list to make. Here's what's got me turned on. Here's what's got me up early, staying up late, maximizing my abilities all day long. Here's the list of what's got me turned on. Now here's the next question. What's got you turned off? How come you don't have the zest and the vitality 
and the appetite for daily accomplishment. I started making a list of the things that had me turned off. And once I got that settled, and then started making a list of what had me turned on and what would turn me on in the future, I'm telling you, my life has never been the same. It was like a revolution, a personal revolution, a 180 degree turn. Wow. I can't say it strong enough. It's easy to get lazy in designing the day and designing the year and designing the future and designing what you want to accomplish and just cross your fingers and hope it'll all work out, that the favorable winds will blow it all your way. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. So this is the part of the exercise is just, you know, buckling down, making this list. And you've got to continue this long after we've, you know, turned out the lights and we've all gone home. Keep this up. And one of the best ways to keep it up, I've already covered yesterday is what? Teach it. The key is to teach it. Jan was right. You don't need recognition. Just go give everybody you can think of that deserves it recognition. And your own self-satisfaction is recognition enough. If they never put a crown on your head, who cares? Okay, the four most important one-year goals. Have you got those identified? Okay, now here's the next exercise. This will take now just a little bit of time. And the question is why? Why are those four goals important to you? Because the why is very important, and I'm going to give you some notes on that a little bit later. So just start a little paragraph, why those four goals are important to you. A couple of more minutes for this one, and then we'll put a little star there that says continue this later. And then I have some more notes for you to take. A couple of more minutes, why? This is a good question to ask kids. Kids said, here's what I'd like to have, and you say, why is that? And if they can start describing the why. So now make these notes. Put a little star there now, and that star means that, you know, you can add to it later. So make these notes now. Here's the first one. When the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. When the why gets big, powerful, strong, how seems to be so much easier. Without a strong enough why, the how seems to be too difficult almost to accomplish. Say, so how do you manage your time? Hey, if you had strong and powerful enough goals, you'd figure out how to manage your time. You'd get a book on the subject. You know, you'd do something to manage your time if it was worth it. If it's not worth it, you know, why would you bother studying the art? of managing your time if it really doesn't matter. But if it really mattered in the accomplishment of your goals and why you wish to accomplish them, see, you can do anything. You can get up any hour, read any book, take any class, make any change, develop any skill, do any discipline. I mean, you can do it all when this how and the why, or when the why starts to grow. The how gets simple. Excellent question to ask children. Why? What for? Little note. Maybe one of your goals was to have a million dollar home on the hill overlooking Snake River Valley. Okay. That'd be a good goal. A million dollar home. Here's the next question. What for? What for? I mean, a house is a house is a house with bricks and wood and walls and roof. The key, yes, million dollar home, that'd be wonderful, but what for? So now jot this down. Purpose is stronger than object. The object would be the house and that'll pull. That's a worthy goal to go for, the object of the house. But here's a stronger goal, the purpose for the million dollar home. You say, well, it'll be the centerpiece of all the family's activity. 
with all kinds of unique people coming and going and the influence and things will be happening in this place. See, now we're getting somewhere. So if you got that line, it's one of my best for the whole day. Purpose is stronger than object. It's okay to have plenty of objects to go for on your goal list. But always keep asking yourself the question, and sometimes it's good to just write it out. Here's why I want this money. Here's why I want this place. Here's why. And you start developing those reasons. And I'm telling you now, this starts to become incredibly powerful. Okay. Now here's some more notes. Some of your goals should be personal development. The person you wish to become. Develop skills that make you attractive to the marketplace. Develop the temperament and the attitude that makes you attractive to the business world. The attitude and the temperament that makes you a splendid father studying the art Because here's what's important. It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become that makes you valuable. I keep saying this year after year for the last 39 years publicly. It's the person you become. I admired my friend Mark Hughes for the fortune he made and the company he built. Guess what I admired more? The person he became in a short 44 years. He was unique. He bought the idea at age 19 of personal development and worked on it daily from that day until the time he died. The idea of becoming an attractive person, a skillful person, a good friend, a good colleague, a good partner, a good member of the round table, a contributor. See, that's the key, the person you become. Okay, now here's the next exercise. Isn't this good stuff? I mean, this, I'm telling you, this stuff changed my life, altered the course of my life. From milk and cows to sitting on this stool. <laughs> Incredible. What a journey. And part of the explosive stimulation started when I met Earl Schoff. And he asked me, have you got a list of goals? And I said, no. And he said, then I can guess your bank balance. I thought, whoa. I immediately started studying the art. And the art and the accomplishments of it helped to change my life and qualified me to come and speak to you today. Right? You've got to be qualified, right? I invite a thousand people to come, hear what you've got to say. It's unbelievable. But all of this journey, you know, happened for me.